First of all, thank you to the Secretariat of the Convention and especially Ulrike for, for inviting the Ministry of Education, Culture and Sport to attend this important meeting on underwater cultural heritage. Thank you sincerely, uh, Ulrike. Well, first of all, um, and before going into the case of Nuestra Señora de las Mercedes, uh, let me talk about, well, some words, some few words about the legal and political framework on underwater cultural heritage in our country. And then we have to talk about the uh, UNESCO Convention that for us in Spain, it's like our Bible, really. Uh, just today, we had an important seminar in the Archaeological Museum, and all the speakers there, all the Spanish ones from the Ministry of Interior and Culture, all of us started our, our, our speech talking about the UNESCO Convention. Um, so Spain was one of the first countries in ratifying the Convention in 2005, uh, because our legal uh, law uh, the philosophy of our legal uh, law, it's just the same as the UNESCO Convention, so we didn't have any trouble in ratifying. And so after ratifying this text, uh, there was an ongoing commitment to defend, study and protect this cultural heritage. And in Spain, it's the Department of Protection of Historic Heritage, the one that coordinates the implementation of this convention. Afterwards, in 2007, uh, the Spain's Council of Ministers transformed the commitment made by the ratification of the, of the Convention into an effective and well-planned action uh, that is uh, in the National Plan for Protection of Underwater Cultural Heritage. Well, this is a kind of decalogue. It's a very simple document, but very important one that goes from documentation and inventory, physical and legal protection, training, appropriate resources, coordination, that's a vital one, and um, development of inter-ministry agreements. This is one of the key actions. In fact, we had the Ministry of Culture, our ministry, has different uh, agreements with all the administration and institutions that are in charge of the protection of underwater cultural heritage. That is to say, with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ministry of Interior, and Ministry of Defense. That's the way to coordinate all of us uh, on the underwater cultural heritage. And afterwards, um, the Council of uh, the Historical Heritage Council, which is the body that coordinates the, 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 uh, the cultural issues, the, the historical heritage issues between our autonomous communities, that is like the regions and the states, uh, we decided to, to establish a working group to draft the so-called uh, Green Book of Underwater Cultural Heritage. And these books propose the priority actions that Spain should carry out to ensure effective uh, protection of this, of this heritage. Uh, you can, well, if you are interested, you can look at it at the web page of, of our Ministry of Culture. And well, I think most of you know the Underwater Cultural Heritage Museum that in November 2008 saw so the re-inauguration of this, of this uh, important museum. And we have uh, recently, we have opened a new conservation and restoration laboratory. Uh, you have some images here. Well, just to say that the first meeting of the scientific and technical advisory body was uh, taken place in, at, the, at this museum, at the Underwater Cultural Heritage Museum. And in October, the International Congress, ICUA, um, uh, was held uh, at, this, at this museum, I guess. Some of you were there. Well, and then the case. Um, these uh, few words about our legal and political framework was important in order to understand uh, why our Minister of Culture acts so quickly and so determined to, to go against this, uh, this uh, firm uh, and, and, and was to decide to start the process against them. 
The case of Nuestra Señora La Mercedes, in fact, was a turning point in the area of legal defense of underwater cultural heritage against treasure hunted enterprise. In fact, it was the first time that a country uh, decided to, to loot, to, to, to fight against a treasure company uh, to the court. And the Spanish state, through the Ministry of Culture, and more specifically through the Department of, of Protection of Historic Heritage, Su Odyssey, before the Cart of Tampa. Spain submitted what the court referred to as extraordinary documentation from our archives that all of you know, the archives of India and the archives of the Spanish Navy, to demonstrate first that the, the Fragata Nuestra Señora de las Mercedes was a warship, and second, that this was Nuestra Señora de las Mercedes, the identification of the warships itself. Um, but let me tell you a, a bit about the process before uh, going into the, the main decisions by the court. Well, in May 2007, all of us uh, knew because uh, uh, Odyssey announced uh, to the world media that it had recovered an enormous treasure worth 500 million euros or more from a mystery shipwreck whose identity was unknown and which Odyssey, which Odyssey code known Black Swan. Apparently, hoping to persuade Spain not to take any actions, Odyssey began telling the media that there was no shipwreck at the site where the coins had been recovered, and the hundreds of thousands of coins might have been thrown overboard by a mysterious passing ship. Within a month, Documents in the archives of the India, the Navy, and the Royal Academy of History were located that contain enough evidence to begin an intervention in the USA courts to assert that the Black Swan was actually a Spanish ship. This evidence allowed Spain's team to convince the USA court to order Odyssey to provide access to its photographs and video of the site and to allow a Spanish team of experts to inspect the coins and other artifacts that were in storage in the USA. Inspections of the photographs, videos, and artifacts taken to the USA immediately confirmed that they matched the cannons, equipment, and cargo of the Mercedes. Incredibly, even as this evidence was being examined by the Spanish team, Odyssey was submitting sworn papers to the United States court claiming that the identity of the Black Swan could not be determined. As the historical record of the Mercedes was assembled from, from the Spanish archives for presentation to the court, the key factors become clear, as I have already said. Nuestra Señora de la Mercedes was a war frigate on active duty on an official royal mission to transport national resources in peninsular Spain from the Americas. Mercedes was sunk by a catastrophic explosion during an attack by the British Navy. Mercedes has a vital role in Spanish history because her destruction and sinking left King Carlos IV with no choice but to declare war on Great Britain. Here you have some, image, some images of the director of Odyssey, Gris Gestem, with the coins. And before going into the, the main decision, let me tell you the principal legal, legal and factual points that were central to the decisions that were taken by the American court. First, the evidence that Spain had assembled proved to absolute certainty that the black swan was the Mercedes. The court declared that Odyssey had engaged in bad faith denial of the existence and identity of Spain's Mercedes. Second, the Mercedes was on active service as a ship of state and remains entitled to the sovereign immunity that all nations are required to grant ships of state. Third, Odyssey's activities at the shipwreck site irreparably disturbed a Spanish national archaeological and historic site. Fourth, the Mercedes sovereign immunity includes all of the cargo that Mercedes was carrying, including the shipment registered by particulares. Fifth, Odyssey was ordered to return to Spanish custody every artifact that Odyssey had taken from the Mercedes. 
And finally, Odyssey oh, have no right to any payment or compensation for the coins and other artifacts removed without authorization by Spain. So, well, as you can see, the, the legal principles were, were very, very clear. And the report and recommendation also. All of them ruled in favor of Spain. This is really an international legal precedent. The first one was in June 2009. And of course, it's a very big decision. <laughs> I, have, I have only uh, put in the screen some of the beautiful sentences, because the, the style of the jazz, it, it's, it's written in a very nice way. Uh, as you can say here, it says, uh, more than 200 years have passed since the Mercedes exploded. Her place of rest and all those who perished with her, that fateful day remained undisturbed for the centuries until recently. International law recognizes the solemnity of their memorial and Spain's sovereignty interest in preserving it. The second one, because the, the, the first one had no force of law, this was an order. This uh, has legal, this is a legal order. Um, it was in December 2009, and the judge just said the same that the other one just, just have already said, and it ordered Odyssey to release the recovered rest to the custody of Spain. But then Odyssey continue, continue with the process and try to, to, to go to any court. So uh, they even went to the United States Court of Appeals, but the appeal was rejected, rejected by this tribunal. And even uh, went for petition for certiorari. I, I guess there are some Americans here and they know what it means. And it's a very strange to go to the Supreme Court. That's what our uh, James Gould uh, said, that the, very, the, the Supreme Court in very few cases uh, accept the petition for certiorari, like a 5% of the cases that are presented are accepted by the by the Supreme Court. So obviously, the petition was rejected also. And then we had this uh, final resolution in 2013. We were very happy with it, <laughs> we must say, because we, we have discussed it with our lawyer also, if it was possible to, to, to have this, uh, to, re to, to claim for a fine to Odyssey, really, because uh, it, they have looted on a Spanish site. And he told us that it was very difficult also <laughs> to get a fine, but we should try. I think it was easier because of the attitude of Odyssey during the process, because the, the attitude was terrible and the court was really angry with Odyssey. And you can see it here, because it is set in the decision. And they, they, they say, as you, as, you, as you can see in the screen, United States court find Odyssey for continued frivolity and bad faith through the litigation, as it has refused to identify the wreck and exhausted all the appeals despite knowing that it was indeed Nuestra Señora de las Mercedes, and definitely resisted the ruling of the courts. So it was, uh, it is quite clear, the, the, the declaration of the, of the tribunal. But then uh, we have to cope with a difficult task, which was the return of the artifacts. Um, fortunately, we have already asked the, the, the court if we could go there to see the cargo, because we, we have to verify that the cargo was there and the court accepted it. And so we could go uh, two times there, and there it was, the cargo. Uh, huge cargo, incredible. This, this was a really titanic mission, really, really, because it was, uh, uh, we could manage to do it in two and a half days, which is a record time. Um, the thing is that the strategy was already prepared because the, Two times we were there, we were thinking about how to do it. So we, we had some time to think about the strategy. And here is the team. Um, they are all curators from the Archaeological Museum in Madrid, from the, um, the Water Culture Heritage Museum in Cartagena. 
here well, our lawyer, <laughs> James Gould, our hero. Here are some images um, trying to do the inventory that was already started when we went for the from the very first time. Here you can see that the, some of the coins were really ready to be sold. Some of the coins. Here are some images of the team working. This is one of the most beautiful ones. There were lingots also, very uh, heavy ones. This is a very beautiful box also. And afterwards, after the returning of this uh, incredible cargo that you can um, maybe see, uh, well, I will show you the uh, total, the result of the count, count in order for you to, to know the, <laughs> the, the huge cargo. Uh, it, it was uh, like um, 570 containers weighing between 40 and 50 kilos. So you can see it was a huge, huge cargo and difficult, difficult task. Even now we, we think how could we be able to do it, <laughs> really, it was incredible. But then we have to do the counting at the Ministry of Culture because we only have two days and, and, and a half there and we have to do a proper inventory at the Ministry of Culture and this was the result of the count. And as you all know, after the counting, after restoration, uh, we decide to organize an incredible exhibition named the last voyage of the frigate Nuestra Señora de las Mercedes. Uh, it was located at the Minister of, of the Minister Sorino at the Museum of Archaeology and at the Museum Naval. I think Arturo was there representing the Secretary of, of this convention. And of course we, um, sorry, going back. Um, we try through this exhibition uh, not only to show the, the cargo and the beautiful pieces and to tell about the story of the Fragata de la Mercedes, but also to raise awareness about the protection of underwater cultural heritage. It, that is not uh, object of exploitation, that it should not be never object of exploitation, of commercial exploitation, because the underwater cultural heritage is a heritage of humanity. And that was very clear in the exhibition. And we, of course, mentioned the Convention of Underwater Cultural Heritage of UNESCO. And then another step was to go there, to, to go to, to the site and, and to organize an unintrusive archaeological mission. It was the first Mercedes expedition that took place last year. The first uh, Mm, uh, risk was uh, to know if the coordinates were the coordinates that Odyssey has, uh, if the coordinates that Odyssey has given to the court were correct. Because having in mind the attitude that Odyssey have during the process, we were not sure about the coordinates and if they were true coordinates. So first of all, uh, the mission went there, went there and it was, it, they were correct. And so they were able to identify the total extent of the site and to document the damage caused by the unscientific intervention carried out by the company. Uh, they have a very good weather, so they could work quite a lot. Here you have some of the images. Uh, we, in order to do this mission, we had to to be, uh, well, we, we had this, this incredible ship you can see there. Um, it comes from the Institu uh, Oceanographic Insti Institute. And as you can see there, well, the four succeed in finding the exact location. Um, the most difficult task was to do a survey that was conducted uh, 1,200 uh, 1, meters under the sea, which is a record in the field of underwater cultural heritage. 
and a number of parts were removed in an effort to document and research the Greek of the fragates. You can see here some of the main objects that were removed. One of the most beautiful one is the, obviously the one you have on the left, the golden one. And then uh, we have a print and digital publication, which is in Spanish and English. I have brought with me some of the, some of the books, just if you want to take a look. <laughs> I see yes. <laughs> and of course, I will give one of them to, to the secretary of the convention, to Rike, with pleasure. And then we, we have two videos. Uh, I didn't have, well, I didn't bring it with me because we, we didn't have time, we don't have time. There are a lot of lectures today. So uh, one of 10 minutes and another one of 20 minutes and, and it is in Spanish, so it was not worth to bring them with me. And then we have a second expedition just last week. So I don't have photographs of this one because the, uh, we don't have official photographs. The weather was not so good as last year. Unfortunately, this expedition last, uh, was going to last more than last year, but they only could work during a weekend because the, the weather was terrible, really terrible. So um, I just show you some of the kind of artifacts that have been removed. They had got to complete the plates and spoons and uh, I think it's like 42 objects of this uh, kind, this type. And uh, finally they, they, they got these, the, the part that matches with the golden one. I didn't know the name of English of this specific object, but the, the one that is down of that one, that matches with it, that one. Uh, they, they got to remove it. And thank you very much. That's all.